Good afternoon. Uh, we have with us uh, Professor Wu Zimbo. Mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, he's the Executive Dean of the Institute of International Studies and the Director at the Center for American Studies at Fudan University. Um, he has kindly agreed to answer some of our questions. Thank you very much. Our first question to you is on the changing dynamics of the Asia-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. How does China perceive Australia's role in the shifting dynamics of Asia-Pacific? Well, uh, overall of the uh, uh, evolving regional order in the Asia Pacific is that it's going to become um, more uh, pluralistic with more and more regional actors play active role in regional affairs, including uh, Australia. So in that sense, um, uh, Australia uh, is not only an important actor in regional uh, economic cooperation, if we think about APEC, and other regional economic uh, 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 mechanisms, but also uh, 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 a possible uh, contributor to regional uh, stability, uh, especially when, when it comes to uh, maritime security, uh, humanitarian uh, uh, relief, uh, disaster relief, and all these kind of issues. So uh, I think uh, in China we view Australia as uh, uh, an ever growingly important a uh, partner in uh, regional affairs. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, and our second question is, during formal negotiations at the start of this month, Trade Minister Andrew Robb has said that solid progress had been made towards finalizing a free trade agreement between Australia and China. So now there is belief that this agreement can be signed by the end of this year. Do you believe, in your opinion, uh, this free trade agreement will be beneficial for both parties? And what role will this agreement play in the future China-Australia relations, if formalized? Uh, yes, this uh, um, FTA will certainly uh, contribute to the economic uh, uh, well-being of both countries. And uh, if the agreement is signed and came into effect, it will put uh, China-Australia relations on a more solid basis and also to uh, uh, open the uh, pros uh, prospects even wider for uh, economic relations between our two countries. So I'm very hopeful that uh, either during or after Chinese President Xi's visit to Australia, uh, the agreement will be finalized. You have positive prospects for it. Yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, in an article you wrote for New York Times in April this year, you described the United States as having been a destabilizing force in the dispute between China and Japan mm -hmm. over the sovereignty of a small chain of islands in the East China Sea. Mm -hmm. To what extent has the United States acted as Japan's enabler, in your words? And in your opinion, what steps must be taken by China and Japan in order to resolve or come to or begin to resolve uh, the East China Sea standoff? Well, I think the U.S. Uh, made two mistakes uh, in this case. First, um, when Japan told uh, the United States that they were going to uh, uh, change the status quo over Diaoyi Island by nationalizing the islands, uh, Washington didn't oppose it, but rather gave the Japan the impression that the U.S. Uh, agree would agree with what Japan was going to do. So uh, that was the first mistake uh, uh, by Washington. And second, uh, when Japan's nationalizing of the allies caused the uh, harsh uh, dispute between China and Japan, uh, U.S. Um, took the side of Japan by claiming that the U.S.-Japan alliance would apply to these, you know, islands, which have, you know, uh, uh, have never been really inhibited by anyone from Japan or, you know, uh, uh, exercising uh, sovereignty by Japan over it. But that sounds like um, uh, the U.S. would go along with Japan, uh, whatever Japan is going to do on these uh, islands. Um, what China and Japan should do on this issue, I think the first step is that for Japan to acknowledge that there is a dispute between China and Japan over the islands. Uh, so far, uh, Tokyo has refused to acknowledge there is a dis dispute, while the uh, rest of the world understands there is a dispute between China and Japan uh, over the sovereignty of the islands. And secondly, if Japan can acknowledge this dispute, 
Then Beijing and Tokyo can sit down to discuss how to freeze the situation and calm down the, uh, 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 the situation around the Diaoyu Islands. So I think first and foremost, Japan should face the fact and acknowledge that there is a dispute uh, between China over the Islands. China is not in a hurry to solve these issues. We can leave it aside if both sides agree. So and we can, you know, uh, uh, try to not make this issue a big issue in uh, bilateral relations. Thank you. Uh, uh, the second question that arises from the third question is: uh, the Prime Minister of Japan has made a recent visit to Australia in July this year. Uh, the visit concluded with both countries announcing that they will pursue closer military and defense ties, although not formalized. Uh, in your opinion, how will the moves for establishing closer defense ties between the two nations likely to be interpreted by China? Well, um, the reaction in China is that um, Japan, um, not only because of the uh, Gyeongyi Island dispute with China, but also uh, concern over rising uh, China is trying to get other countries, be it the United States or Australia, uh, 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 to be on its side in uh, constraining China strategically and militarily. So this growing uh, security cooperation, defense cooperation between uh, Australia and Japan is certainly viewed as an attempt by Tokyo to uh, squeeze China's uh, 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 sense of security and ex exercise more pressure on China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And our final question has to do with the G20 upcoming summit in Brisbane later on this year. Uh, we can see some disagreements in the G20 between emerging and advanced countries. As a middle power that Australia is perceived to be, what do you think its role will be in terms of its influence in the G20 discussions? Well, um, as a, as a host uh, of the G20, um, Australia can uh, play an important role in setting the agenda for this year's summit. Uh, what's going to be discussed uh, uh, for this year's uh, 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 leaders' meeting? And also, I think Australia can uh, um, uh, take some initiatives um, uh, in some of the key issues of the agenda. What uh, 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 should be do, should be done to uh, promote uh, some consensus uh, among the members, and also more importantly um, for Australia to come up with uh, with more initiatives about what's going to be done down the road because this is uh, going to be a multi-year process. So what's important is not only the consensus achieved this year, but also the path to the future. Uh, how to set the uh, direction for the future development of the G20 uh, process. And uh, I have full confidence that uh, with Australia's hard working um, uh, on this and uh, the, the collaboration from other countries, including China, uh, this year's G20 will achieve something meaningful uh, for this process.